Okay, hi. Um, this talk is about Jenkins Debian Net, which should become Jenkins Debian Org one day and also should be more team maintained than it currently is. Um, I first spend some time explaining what the current status is. If there's any question, please just ask them directly. Um, so I do some things in Debian, and basically I show this to show that I'm very busy. Um, I start also do this PU parts thing, which you might know, which tests the installation of packages, upgrade and removal, together with Andreas Beckmann. And in 2012, I've started to set up this Jenkins instance, which is currently still running. And I'm also involved in reproducible builds, which is largely, largely using this Jenkins. And for that, I'm funded by the Linux Foundation. So I'm busy. <coughs> and so I basically merge patches for Jenkins, um, just looking whether it's safe and doesn't destroy anything else, then I will merge it if it concerns somebody's other work. There's at the moment over 1,500 jobs running on this Jenkins. And it's quite a mess. Um, there are Python scripts, there's shell script, there's Perl. There's Ruby, um, and so whatever, if you want to clean up things, I will review it more thoroughly, but if you just want to invent the next new island for your test, that's fine with me. I really don't care as long as it doesn't break the system. But then I do care, um, and I really want to maintain this Jenkins as a team, um, because I think it's, first it's better quality and also to get load off from me. Um, but it, and there is a team of se several people, but it's still mostly my setup. There's even Jenkins Debian Org since a year, I think, the machine exists. And this, in the end, I will present my very simple plan how to get there, um, but there could be other ways. So the only other person really knowing this Jenkins setup a lot is Mattia. Um, he has accessed all the accesses I have. Um, he can deploy jobs, de change configuration, do everything. But he's also very busy, and so we need more people working on this part. In Debian, there's Valerie and others who um, maintain this reproducible Debian net pages, Matthias and me as well. Helmut Krone is maintaining a lone reboot strap. Samuel Thibault heard on accessible jobs. Stephen Chamberlain tests stuff with K3BSD, Phil Hens LVC, which is graphic installation, and Thomas Niteki is also gave some Java support. In total, we have 36 committers. Um, there's also some from Arch Linux, OpenSUSE, Lead, Coreboot, Gigs, FreeBSD, and NetBSD. So it's not only Debian anymore. Um, so who are you? who uses Jenkins Debian Net regularly, watches, like, looks at result pages. Nobody is using this Jenkins at all? Yay. That's bad. <laughs> who wants to contribute to jobs? OK, a few more people. <laughs> and who thinks Jenkins is currently too noisy? Probably no one if you're not looking at the results. <laughs> they are on some IRC channels as well. So to me, Jenkins is mostly a cron scheduler with a web UI and notifications. Jenkins has lots of plugins to do whatever, pipelines and job control and stuff. And I mostly use it to schedule jobs. And then have a web UI where you can see how a job has behaved over time or other stuff. And I also consider Jenkins as not secure. I don't trust any result which is built on the machine. So by design, I just do QA stuff there. And I, the other use case could be presenting results. So I, I trigger a job on a secure machine from this Jenkins. This Jenkins, the other machine would build it, and then Jenkins would present the results. But I don't think we should build anything trustworthy on a machine with Jenkins because of the Java libraries, and there's too much non-free stuff, and nobody understands Jenkins. So and Debian has some more QA efforts, which you probably know. There's Lincian, which 
look, works on source packages, PU parts, which test the installation. There's CI, Debian, Net for Auto tests. Some people do periodic archive rebuilds, usually only on AMD 64. So there's lot, many things which are done QA-wise which are not on Jenkins, and it's probably good that they are not on Jenkins. I don't want to move everything there. <coughs> so as I said, I started with Jenkins in 2012, and I was freelancing at Profitbricks at that time. They're a cloud provider, so I asked them for some few resources and that has grown over time. So this, this is a job number, and it's even it's 1,500 jobs now, and this was November 2016, so the graph is here now. Um, today, it's at Profitbricks, it's 17 machines and two data centers with in total 170 cores and half a terabyte RAM, five terabyte storage, and no static IP addresses. And as it's cloud provider, DCD is the software to manage this, and so you have hardware access via IPMI-like thing, and Mattia and me have access to that, which we could other people if there were more. And then, additionally to these 13 or 17 systems at Profitbricks, there's um, other systems running at Vagrant's place, um, for testing ARMHF, and there's also eight ARM64 machines at CodeThink, and there's now three, no, there's six new ARM64 boards in Zurich from Axel Beckert, which are not production, so there's almost 50 hosts which com compromise this Jenkins setup. And of these 50 hosts, host 42 are for reproducible builds testing, and the other is for other Jenkins jobs. Um, so everything which is running is in this one Git repository in the Debian QA group. If you check it out, read the install and readme document and job config and the bin directory are the most important things to look at it. Um, there are many things to improve, like we could configure the jobs with Ansible, we could build with Sbuild or Debian, uh, Jenkins Debian Glue, could have better name spaces. Um, there are many things to improve in this code base. Um, ple please do. I'd be happy for improvements. And the, there's views in Jenkins. So <coughs> when you look at Jenkins Debian Net, you don't have see 1,500 jobs, but you see 20 or 25 views where jobs are grouped. And so far, this was done manually, and this can you now be done with Jenkins Job Builder as well. Um, but somebody has to do it. So far, they are all configured manually. Um, benefits for Debian, um, the first, there's notification about failing jobs or unstable jobs. Um, un failing jobs is obvious. Unstable jobs are jobs where there's some warning in the job, so you can use regular expressions to say this warning should make a job unstable. Um, and the, one of the problem there is there's lots of notifications about problems, but hardly anyone files bugs from it. So sometimes I file bugs, but I don't always file bugs because it finds too many issues. And then there's, sometimes I see bugs being filed where I know the problem since two weeks or something. So if more people would go through the results and file bugs, that would also help. In Reproducible, it works nicely. There we have filed over 2,000 fails to build from source bugs so far but there's more bugs to be found. So, yeah, benefits for you. Um, I was hoping that there are more people in the audience who know the jobs, the existing ones, so nobody will be annoyed if you don't look. Um, first, we have some um, various QA-related jobs, like we have a job to find orphan, bug pack orphan packages where there's no orphan bug filed. We run the dpackage trigger cycle thing, um, step helper, depth sums, Lincian, and PU parts are built from Git on every commit. Uh, in this, it's now Jesse, Buster, and Unstable, and Stretch. Um, we find multi arch version. Is there documentation for all the users? Because I'm quite sure that many people would be interested in adding stuff to their own packages. So, the other side of the question is. Uh, do you see Jenkins Debian Net as the place to go to do 
uh, builds on commit for all packages in Debian? Well, maybe, I don't know. Resor yeah. uh, Resources-wise is a question, but we can add a few more. There's some people using Travis. Yeah. Um, my point of view is if we need more resources, we can get them. Like it's not a problem yeah. to get computing power for Debian. Do you know if, it's, if it has been discussed uh, in the discussion about replacing IOS with something else? Uh, how to plug this, uh, Pajur? I don't know, but I think most Alios discussions will happen at the Alios sprint after DebConf. Okay. So, and I'll be there, so maybe that happens. And the, yeah. And it's, it's all there's a packages YAML in this job config for the configuration of those, those jobs. So you could just add another one there. Yeah, but I mean, if the, say the Perl team wants to use this, it needs something more efficient and one line per package. Yeah. yeah. If the Perl team wants to use that, then they can, we can come up with a way. Um, the Haskell team is also using this to calculate the installability. That's one group. And they have one notification, which I, so IRC and mail notification, I guess, are clear. They're on the channel of your mail. There's another form of notification, which are these icons. So this is for reproducible, and every icon is a job on different, running on different hosts. And the result is immediately shown there. So this is an unstable job there. And there, these blue ones are currently running jobs. And that's just the image you can load and display on your wiki pages or whatever. The Haskell team is using that to show whether their jobs succeed or not. <laughs> Um, then there are 450 ch root installation tests, which do apt install some meta package, um, or they also do apt install some meta package and then upgrade to the next distro. That's why the numbers down there, these numbers don't add up, so there are more than 453, because they are also counted installation in Jesse and then upgrade to stretch or whatever. The Jesse stuff is still tested monthly, um, because it also triggers the upgrade to stretch. The stretch stuff is um, tested weekly, buster every other day, and sit daily. And that finds stuff with, where, where packages are uninstallable in sit usually, or buster. Um, then there's a hack which I wrote, which is GI installation test, which tests Debian installer in text and graphical mode, creates videos and screenshots, and we have tests for Debian, plain Debian, and rescue mode. Also rescue mode in all the different um, glyphs. So it's not only testing in Latin, but also Cyrillic and eight Indian variants and Chinese and whatnot. Um, it's, it's true what it is, it only tests Jesse, Stretch, and Sit. I didn't bother to test, set it up for Buster. It also tests not only Linux, but K3BSD and Hurt. So K3BSD K3BSD and Hurt have been installable in the last year. I've seen installations succeed where the browser pops up at the end. And most of this shall be duplicated and replaced by something which Phil is working on, which I'll explain in a second. But these are the screenshots, so it really it tests the installation, then boots the, lock, the, the installed system and starts the web browser to see if that works. And that could be extended to also test LibreOffice or whatever. <coughs> But this is a gross hack, so Phil works on this LVZ, LVZ test, uh, which so is a, well, uh, can I, well, uh, Do you have physical machines to run those tests? No. So everything is uh, in a virtualization? Yeah, it's okay. KVM on KVM. Is it currently possible to run tests on physical machines for someone that needs it? It's like, for example, if you need to test virtualization, nested virtualization is not efficient. It is possible, but I don't have access to these physical machines at the moment. But if you would have the machines and want to test something, we could do that. Um, so these libvirt cucumber-based tests come from Tails. I took them from Tails three years ago because they really have used nicely used Cucumber as a testing framework. So you define 
the setup I have a computer with, with um, cl not clear, with human understandable English language that are the jobs definitions. So you define I have a computer with two gigabytes of RAM and I install Debian and then there's some logic what action it means. That's really nice to do and um, it's now usable for Debian and now the Tails people are also pushing their stuff back to us because they want Debian to be tested better to base Tails on Debian. So this is now a full cycle of code reuse. Um, and I hope it will be ready finally this year that it can be used. It also produces video. It doesn't produce these um, images yet. And then there are more Debian installer related jobs like all packages building UDEPs. They are also built on every commit in the Git master branch. Um, plus the manual in all languages is built on Git triggers. And Phil and me have plans also to build proposed branches. So if you have a bug, you create a proposed bug 123345 um, branch. And then packages from this branch are built all together from if there are several repos with this branch and a new DI image is done. That still has this half working. And for Debian Edu, there's also these GI jobs with test the installation, and we have package um, tests. And they are especially useful for Debian Edu doc because the manual is then automatically visible, even without an upload, and people can review and check things. But it's also useful for the other packages where mostly syntax errors are detected really quickly. Yeah, then there's Helmut's work with rebootstrapping. So that's cross-de bootstrapping Debian from scratch on a combination of all these um, CPU platforms and libc platforms. Um, I think it's over 90 jobs now and Helmut finds <coughs> lots of things and it's basically his research project and I show it here as an example. Even that is not really in Debian, you can, that's still useful for, from a QA point of view. And if you have other interesting things to do, why not run it there? Yeah. yeah, and for reproducible builds, there's 483 jobs now, so one third about of the Jenkins jobs are for that. There were 150 jobs more building packages, which now were replaced by a small system D service written in shell, because it just kicks off builds. Um, but that's not, uh, that even, that setup is not only about Debian anymore, there's also 30 or 40 jobs for other things. But let's talk about Jenkins Debian org only today. Sorry, can you elaborate just a bit on how you deal with uh, Jenkins? What's the role, what's, what's the respective role of Jenkins and the systemd services, yeah? The, sy the systemd service is just triggering worker scripts which then build and there are so many, like there's 150 of them and they constantly run, they only take three minutes or so, so there's 20,000 job runs every day and they just clutter the UI because nobody looks at the jobs. Okay. In other things it's useful to have jobs, but here there's so many builds happening, yeah. it's just noise, nobody looks at them. But then that's a limit, uh, limitation of Jenkins that applies to many things in Debian that doesn't really scale to 25,000 packages. So whatever you want to do, which... I wouldn't say that Jenkins doesn't scale to 24,000 jobs. It gets yeah. on the limit, but it's more this, the number of concurrent jobs running. <laughs> like I spoke with the Jenkins developers at Fostem and they were were surprised about the setup and they told me it's one of the biggest setup they know. Okay. And that really surprised me. Yeah. So about the migration, um, there is, Yerea is the Debian host name. Um, it's ready, it's set up. I th I'm not sure whether every DD can log in or whether it's a group, I best, best try it out. Um, and there's a C name pointing to Jenkins Debian org. And this is set up by DSA. And at least the current Jenkins team members have access, maybe everyone in QA group. And so my idea is just to create a small script which just runs Jenkins job builder. And 
as a first start, deploy self-yaml, which has five jobs, which basically test whether Jenkins is operational. And once this is done, extend the script to do the next YAML file, which could be the PU parts or something small, and do this till all are moved, with the one assumption that Jenkins Debian Net will stay and st still run the job, but it will just be another build node. So we have ProfitBix build one, two, three, blah, 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 and that will just become build node zero, and will still will run all the jobs which are currently running on Jenkins itself which has the nice benefit that DSA doesn't need to install any software on Yerea because everything will be running on the build nodes. Um, this is basically my migration plan. It's really, we have these, all these scripts in YAML and just move them to the other stuff. And for some time until the I expect that to take a month or two. We'll have two Jenkins instances where some jobs are running on the one thing and on the other. But as we only use Jenkins for some QA efforts, which is not read by other things, I think, I hope that's sufficient. So, uh, so the YAML file would be the one that is input to Jenkins Job Builder. Right. Have you considered not using Jenkins Job Builder? Because in my experience, it's quite limited. Like you, you mentioned the fact that uh, until recently didn't deal with uh, views. And it's actually quite easy to just generate the uh, XML config, config files that Jenkins is expecting. Because it's a bit stupid to start with YAML, convert to XML with a first, well, you move some. from one descriptive format to another one, which, yeah. <laughs> Yes, you're right. And, and to make things worse, we also have Python code to generate the YAML, which... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, for some. You don't have anything to post-process the XML at some but point? But I, I still... I, I didn't consider this because I didn't want to write XML by hand. I, I preferred writing YAML. And I agree all this transformation are silly, yeah. but... Well, maybe I can help with that because I did that uh, at day job. I wouldn't mind... I I think it's motivated by the fact that XML jobs for Jenkins are particularly uh, verbose and annoying to write. Yeah, but I mean, they are always the same. So you can have a basic template and probably only use uh, five different fields in that are the ones that you usually generate in, uh, with uh, Jenkins Job Builder. So, yeah. And there's, there are many things that you can do in the XML that you cannot do with uh, Jenkins Job Builder, like the filtering the combinations. If you use matrix jobs, you cannot easily respect to stuff. You can it's definitely yeah. do everything when you write the XML by hand, or with, with another tool chain to write yeah. XML, of course, and XSL, and ah. Yeah, there's ways to contribute. As I said, please file bugs about stuff Jenkins find or the noise it makes, if it's something, something too noisy. Please send patches with ever modifications. As git preferred and as give, it, give me a git repo to pull from. Um, and yeah, I think we have resources to run every, anything because if, if there's something useful, we find resources. And yeah, nobody has a test set up except Phil. Um, there is one test setup of the Jenkins instance, but we are not really using it. We just mostly deploy stuff, and if it works, then fine. If not, we just fix it up. Um, we are mostly reachable via the Debian QA IRC channel. You can file bugs directly against the Jenkins Debian org pseudo package, and there's a dedicated mailing list also, as well as the QA list. Yeah, uh, one question. Uh, one of the things I used to have with Jenkins is uh, the Jenkins IRC bot telling me uh, whether my Git, produce, my Git patch produces a working or non-working packages, if it can build or not. Can I have that service with Jenkins.debian.org? For what packages? Okay, let's say uh, uh, all the, if I want to integrate all the modules of the Python team inside G Jenkins, 
will I, is it possible then to have a dedicated IRC boat for just this set of modules? It's not. A, it's, it's we use the KGB um, bot from KGB client. Um, and that will join your channel and then give the notifications in your channel. My concern was to have not the result of other jobs. No, no, you won't get them. Okay. You will only get the, the notifications of the jobs that concern you. I'm done with my presentation. Just have the thanks to ProfitBricks and CodeSing, who sponsor hardware and Debian. Linux Foundation for my time and open for questions. So one thing I don't know about Jenkins, so ju we'll just ask is uh, how do you do the mapping between specific jobs and specific workers to make sure that this job runs on a stretch worker, for example? We, we configure it in the job definition. And so far we've configured it that there's all job types run on the same nodes. Okay. And because most, most of the jobs still run on this Jenkins, which I plan to just be build zero, while the, most of the, ho no, uh, the other nodes are only used for reproducible. Okay. And, yeah. and so uh, can some jobs currently break the worker nodes, or is that considered not a great practice? Like if you run something that needs to run as root, for some reason. So my, my question is motivated by what I mentioned. I'd like to uh, test uh, Vagrant uh, cloud images, and that needs to run as root. So you want to run Vagrant? Or QEMU? So, uh, QEMU, yeah. In the setup so far, we just run QEMU, then as would run it as okay. root as needed. Because okay. also these nodes should are easy to reinstall, and if you're test isn't malicious actively, then it's very unlikely to compromise it there. And even if it does, it's just QA results. I don't try to prevent again malicious contributors except by reviewing the code. I know it's quite difficult to, to get a hold of this or start contributing. So if you l want to do something and look, have looked at this Git repository, please just do ask me whatever question you have, whether you think it's silly or stupid or simple. It's probably way simpler to ask me or Mattia or than just try to find it out yourself for hours. I'm happy about any question. Did, did you already think about what will Jenkins.debian.org become after we move away from Alioth to whatever is going to happen? What's your view on that? I know it's maybe early to, to say about it. But. <laughs> I'm, my view is that Alioth will stay. It might have a different name and different software, but there will still be a, repos a Git repository server with users. So I don't whether it's Alios or GitLab or Fubar, or maybe I didn't we, get. Uh, on the survey Alexander did, uh, it showed that everyone was interested in having a CI plugged to it. So that was our, what I was having in mind. I'd be happy to extend this. I'd be happy also to have it separated. Because having it separated gives the advantage to be able to do this cleanly as one service, while this is a bit of a zoo. There's, there's in the zoo, there's different parts, like the reproducible part is nicely contained in a good area in the zoo, and so there could be a CI part in this zoo as well, but could also be somewhere else. Like CI Debianet is something totally different. And I'm happy that it exists, and I'm happy that it's different. <laughs> I 
If there are no more questions, close it here. So the main way to look at results currently is through the Jenkins web interface and the main way to look at what job? To, look, to, to look at the build results, or do you do that currently looking at the Jenkins Debian Net web interface directly? That is, I look at the mail notifications. Okay. And they are, they are for Debian Edu, they are sent to the team list, so that's possible as well. I know the Husker group only looks at this output, basically. So there's so different ways. So this output is generated using the Jenkins REST API or something like that? Uh, yeah, okay. this. Do, 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 do I have network? No, I don't have network. Um. There's the Haskell wiki page. They're still not developing for stretch. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>